The Course of Life podcast is brought to you by Desert Fox Golf. They've been friends of this show since the very beginning, and they're the makers of the phone caddy and the swing aid tumbler. They make a wide variety of products that you can even slap your own logo on, which makes it fantastic for your corporate golf event or party. You can give it away as swag and uh, really give something to your people that are there that are going to enjoy it and remember you and the event. And if you buy over 100 items for your golf outing from Desert Fox Golf, they will give you $100 back. Super easy. Reach out to them at Desert Fox Golf. Check out everything they have at DesertFoxGolf.com. And you can get $100 back when you buy 100 Desert Fox items for your golf outing. Message them on Instagram. You can even shoot us a message as well, and we'll connect you with them. They're super great friends of us, and they want to give you $100 for buying 100 different items for your golf outing. Desert Fox Golf. Check them out. DesertFoxGolf.com. webs and welcome to course of life we are proud to be presented by our friends at desert fox golf and the live take app i'm michael he's alex and this week we have a very special episode for everyone we have our audio journal from our week-long trip in ireland courtesy of tourism ireland and golf ireland We've had to split this episode into two parts because we didn't want to bombard you with a two and a half hour long episode or something in that in that realm of possibility at the very least. So we're presenting to you part one this week, our audio diary entries and some interviews with people we had out on the courses as well. We're going to give you day one at Royal Dublin and day two at the K Club. Again, big thanks to our friends at Tourism Ireland and Golf Ireland for having us out and putting this all together for us to be a part of. We are greatly appreciative to everything they've done. For now, let's get out to our first day thoughts in Dublin. All right, Alex, we've had our longest day in Ireland, our first day here. Started off great for you, didn't it? It did. Uh, I had two flawless flights that got me across the Atlantic Ocean. That wasn't an issue. Great service from the people on board. No in-flight issues at all. The problem is you do need everything that you pack and bring with you to make it to your destination in order for it to be a successful arrival. That, that typically is very helpful, especially if one of those things you're bringing with you is your golf clubs. Yeah, when you're going on a bucket list, once in a lifetime golf vacation to Ireland, you typically like to have Golf clubs, balls, accessories, Desert Fox phone caddies, range finders. Um, oh, also your clothes. You like to have golf clothes well. You like to wear your best outfits, bring your best shirts, the shirt you got, the masters, you know, things that you cherish. You like to have those for a moment like this. I don't have any of those. Yeah. Nothing's arrived. Um, essentially, the update at the end of day one is that I am still luggage and club lists. I think there's about a 62% chance that those things arrive tomorrow on flights in coming to Dublin. But for now, I'm definitely just kind of flying by the seat of my pants with a backpack and a, and a dream. Yep. yep. So we'll follow this throughout the week. We'll see what happens. Uh, and it'll be interesting. But the folks at Royal Dublin. Okay. Yes. Set you up. Let's so turn we, it around. Yeah. Uh, I got in super early this morning, 5, 5 a.m. Before 5 a.m. is when I touched down here in Ireland. And, and I was able to, to come to the hotel. Right We're recording in the lobby, the Ivy Gardens Hotel uh, here in Dublin. And... Uh, I was able to get a room and take a three-hour nap, and I was mildly, uh, but not in anywhere near capacity, refreshed for my for my day. Sounds you nice. went straight to the course with no luggage. Straight to, yeah. And uh, first impression when you got there, what was that like? Well, I was down. I was low. I had a vent session. It lasted about 25 minutes with the cab driver, who was way too friendly. Everyone here. Honestly, everyone here is very friendly. Everyone, it's bordering on too friendly. It's like, all right, when are you going <laughs> to give me some flack? I've heard the Irish people give you a little bit of flack here and there. I haven't got it yet. It's been all nice and all welcoming. Um, so once I got that vent session out, I was needing therapy and I needed someone to come through. Those people were the staff at Royal Dublin Golf Club. The moment I got there, they just emptied out the pro shop for me. They hooked me up in an outfit that I can only describe as a European Ryder Cup team member outfit. 
I mean, it's a great outfit. You're sporting <laughs> the, the the quarter zip right now still. It's, yeah, a, used to great, it's a great logo. Royal <laughs> Dublin is a great logo. Great logo for a classic course that's been around over 120 something years now. When, whenever a course has 1800 and something on their logo, yeah. that's when you know they're doing something right. Um, so they hooked me up right off the bat. They got me a rental set. They got me hooked up. They said, we're getting you on the first tee. I don't care about anything that's happened in the past. You're playing golf. I appreciated that. And then we had a tremendous opportunity that I'm not sure we really thought we'd have where we got to play with John Party, who essentially runs the show at the yep. Royal Dublin Golf Club. He's, he's the captain. He, he's, he's in essence the, the, the club president, in essence, really. He helped make the most recent changes and renovations to the course, which is a big deal. And he walked mm -hmm. us through that deliberately about what those changes look like and how those affect the membership. And he talked about the process for being a captain and the history of the course. He was dropping all sorts of relics. I heard Bono from U2 mentioned in conversation. We heard about some epic Irish Opens. Mm -hmm. All sorts of events happening at that club that we heard about after the 19th hole. And that alone, just hearing those stories from him and, and getting that perspective of walking 18 holes with him definitely made the day worth it because it reminded me of where we are and how yeah. unique it's all is. And he did give us a, a great, two great pieces of history from out in the course when you were able to chat with him. Um, let's listen into both of those. This first one was about just the history of the course, how the course came that to be. That beautiful view. And the beautiful and the, and the view. Property, yeah. um, so he gave us a lowdown on, on how the course came to be. We're in Bull, on Bull Island. Uh, there are two golf courses, um, Royal Dublin uh, and St. Anne's, which is the other end of the island. Um, they, that's Holt in the background over there. And then the city is only three miles away, but it's very hard to believe that you're in the center of the city, really, because it's such a an oasis, really. And um, this uh, island was formed in the 1800s and it's got bigger and bigger all the time because um, Captain Blythe from the famous Mutiny and the Bounty uh, erected a massive wall uh, to help to have a deeper port for the bigger ships. And then it silted up and silted up over the years. We're at a very unique vantage point right now. It's the 14th tee. Uh, John, tell everyone what makes this vantage point uh, with the cityscape in the background so unique for the course. Well, it's fantastic because, um, first of all, you have the clubhouse, um, which is there since 1939. Uh, the original clubhouse was burned down in those days, which did happen in timber-framed houses. And um, that's the, the clubhouse since then. Been renovated a few times, but um, still the same clubhouse. And uh, the 14th is a par 5. Uh, a very gettable for good golfers in two, uh, not for me, but um, it's it's uh, one of these holes that um, make or break a car. So incredible history. That incredible. property, it's, it's so unique. It, it, it used is. to be the sea, yes, and now it's a golf. Now course. it's a golf course, a, the only royal designated course in Ireland. That's a nice flex, by the way. It is a nice flex. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the champion list of, of different events that held there, including some amateurs, includes uh, Louis Oosthuizen. <laughs> that was a random name. Yes, we saw Padre Harrington. We saw David Faraday yep. as a past Irish Open champion. Uh, and that also um, Seve. There's a picture on the wall of Seve and Jack. That's another part about these golf courses that you don't get in as many courses in the U.S. is they can't walk you through a hall of history and a memorabilia of trophy and over 100 years of history, the original grants for how the course came to be. Those are things you just don't get in every part of the world. And that's what makes golf in Ireland so unique is that you're tapping into these things that were seemingly from so long ago, but they're still so relevant to every golfer. Yep, indeed. So let's talk about the course and our play today. Um, you were playing with borrowed clubs, so the expectations were lowered even more, maybe, than they already were going to be. Sneakers. Sneakers. Rentals. Rentals. Fresh off plane. Yep. Jet lag. Uh, by the way, side note, three golf balls and two tees. Yeah. I, I made that work. And you went my glove, one of my gloves. <laughs> um, so it was, it was an interesting assortment of just everything that we had to go on there. Um, and, uh, you know... I think overall, I'm very, you know, I'm very happy with how I played on the course Yeah, today. no, I mean, we all hit an adequate of amount of highlights for day one. Yes. Again, day one trip golf when you're just getting your feet wet and yeah. catching your sea legs is tricky. I, I lucked out and had an early highlight and got it and snagged a birdie that I really shouldn't have. Otherwise, it was pretty pedestrian play from the both of us. But we, we hit it well enough that we were in play and we were relevant on most of the holes. And mm -hmm. That's all you can ask for because when you want to see a new course, of course, you may only play once. You, you want to bring some semblance of a game and have a few memories. Yeah. And 
sharing them with John was awesome. And John shared too, as like you said before, he was sharing about all the changes made to the course during his time as as the captain and removing 38 bunkers, I think was the count from the course. Um, because they were just making it too difficult for, for guys like us. It seems Mostly like guys like me, but you too. He's a man of the people. So it's, yeah. it's what I get is that John understands, like we do, that golf is not just for scratch golfers and professionals that tear up every course they go see. Golf is for everyone at every handicap level. And he understands that the average handicap at World Double may not be as low as you think it would be. So mm -hmm. you have to appease everyone is there. Membership, guests, and, and the like, travelers from around the world. So I appreciate what he did to make the course the way it is. It's still a test. Don't get me wrong. It was. The undulation is what I need to get to. Oh, around yeah. the greens, yeah. there were some chip shots, hills, and undulations that we don't see anywhere in the United no. States. Very unique short game. And it was, it was a lot of me bringing my chipping wedge out to do for a pitch and realizing that I should really be putting this ball. And then there were places when you wanted to putt it, but you couldn't because you had to go up a 10 foot, you know, what felt like a 10 foot rise. Um, I was playing back and forth with that idea of like, do I want to commit to putting more than often? It's, it's like a win in Rome thing. Yeah. You know, like when, like when, you're, when you're over here playing Lynx golf, you do as they do and you putt a little bit more often. I'm a Texas wedge guy. I'm not yeah. a huge putter off the green, but I found myself doing it a few more times than normally. It worked out pretty well in the end. I'd say the short game was decent for her, again, just catching the sea legs off the jet lag. Hit a few bomb drives, again, snagged the birdie. The golf experience itself was impressive. Um, and then really what we need to get to is we need to get to my conversation that I had with John, where he described to us just an impeccable finish to the Royal Dublin track and yes. the history and significance behind it as well. Yes, let's get to that. Uh, Christy O'Connor came to Royal Dublin as a pro in 1959, originally from Galway, uh, Bundoran, Killarney, a few places, known as himself because he was way ahead of his time, brilliant, brilliant golfer. His nephew was Christy Jr., uh, who hold the winning pot in the Ryder Cup in the Belfry, and uh, the O'Connor family were steeped in golf. And the next generation, Peter, is a teaching pro in Portugal, and Christy Minor is a member here as well, so a very, very close connection with Royal Dublin. Very cool. And this plaque isn't here for no reason. There was an amazing achievement that happened at a specific Irish Open right here on these last three holes. What was it that was so amazing that Christy O'Connor did here? Uh, it was Carl's Open in 1966. And um, the, it, it looked like that he, he was he was going to come second. Yeah. Uh, but he finished here with a, a two, three, three. And at that time, the 18th was a par five. So it was eagle, birdie, eagle to win the tournament. So it was... a uh, uh, an absolute shock to everybody that was around at the time because um, they, they didn't give him a chance at that stage. So, Alex, after we did not go birdie, eagle, eagle to finish, there was eagle, no eagle, eagle, birdie, eagle, There was eagle, no five under through three finish. No, no it like was a pretty, pretty pedestrian finish from all of us. He did talk you out on the 18th of going for the green, though, in two. This is one of those things where, again, there were about four or five times where playing with someone who knows the course inside and out and just getting you the right sight line or telling you where you need to aim, absolutely key. Probably saved us a handful of shots each. Yep, did indeed. And then after we finished up that 18th hole, we went to what was a phenomenal 19th hole, which yeah. we had visited for lunch and just got some sandwiches, uh, nice easy lunch, but then we went ahead and had a full three-course dinner in the 19th hole. That was pretty luxurious. Yeah. That was definitely um, one of those moments where I felt very comfortable and also out of place at the same time. Yeah. It, it was very a great meal, phenomenal 19th hole there. Panoramic windows where you can look out to the coast. You see ships passing. You see yeah. golfers finishing on the 18th. You get the full a wet, a, um, bevy of forecast and rain and, and sun and shine and clouds. And it's quite a vista up there. Yeah. And if you haven't checked out our Instagram to see the photos from Royal Dublin, you need to. C-U-L podcast is that handle. Catch everything we have there. That really wraps day one. It's uh, almost 1030 Dublin time. So I think it's time for us to catch some Z's because we got to be up and uh, ready to go at 730 in the morning. So Big day two upcoming. We won't day. say anything, but we'll, we'll be hearing about it very shortly. Well, indeed. So uh, that's it for uh, day one here in Ireland. Course of Life is brought to you by the Live Take app. It's where sports debates are solved once and for all. 
You can drop your own live take on there about anything going on in the world of sports and let everyone on the app vote and decide if you're right or not. You can challenge your friends or random strangers as well to have a live debate in the app. It's what Alex and I do every week there and let everyone on the app decide who is right. You can see whether people agree with you or not. You can challenge us. Check out our challenges that we do there every week and see how we're doing. Follow us so you never miss that as well on the Live Take app. We're on there at Course of Life Alex and Course of Life Michael. Live Take, download it today on your app store. Let your take be heard. All right, it is the conclusion of day two. Alex, it's uh, 11.35 Dublin time. We just got back from dinner. A little past our bedtime. A little past Amazing our bedtime. dinner. A little, little long in length, but... We'll talk about it more in a minute. Okay. We right, will. We'll Let's just say it was a long dinner, but it was well worth it. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's talk about how the day went, though. We went yes. out to the K Club. Uh, Iconic course. Home of the 2006 Ryder Cup. Yep. Home of several Irish Opens, yep. including this year's upcoming Irish Open and a few more to come. Uh, gorgeous uh, course up there, which uh, and also a fantastic looking old hotel as well. It's so this was a bit of a switch up because we got to experience the true Lynx golf at Royal Dublin day one. Mm-hmm. Day two, we were out there for the media day for the Horizon Irish Open. And K-Club, for those who don't know, a very, a very kind of Americanized Parkland golf course. I mean, you and I were remarking to each other when we were playing there that it's kind of interesting that this is going to be a Ryder Cup venue because it, it feels very at home mm-hmm. for the American mm-hmm. team Ryder Cup being venue, a European Ryder Cup venue. Ryder Cup venue again, yeah. I would say. Uh, it is Arnold Palmer design, two courses there. We played the North Course, uh, which is the Arnold, you know. So, but yes, gorgeous course. Um, we'll talk about the conditions. So at first we got to see, we got to uh, chat with some people related to the tournament first. We got to talk to the two Pauls. And uh, first one up, though, was was the general manager of the K-Club. Yeah, that's right. Paul here, he kind of runs a show at the K-Club, and he has a fascinating background in golf management as well. It's always cool to get that perspective from a guy that runs the show at a gigantic venue like this. This is more than just 18 holes of golf, and it was really neat to see kind of everything that goes into him running the K-Club. The K Club has a has a huge reputation of hosting major tournaments. Uh, it's it's no surprise that we're back here again for the event in September. Uh, it has hosted a Ryder Cup. It has hosted 13 European Opens, and we hosted the Irish Open back in 2016, where we all remember Rory McIlroy hitting that shot in on 18. And I guess that's what we're we're hoping for this year is we have an Irish winner back here at the Horizon Irish Open at the K Club. So it's exciting. It's really exciting to be back. Uh, hosting tournaments. Definitely not only the Irish Open, but the original memory being maybe the 2006 Ryder Cup for a lot of fans. What are your favorite memories from that week, which maybe kind of kicked off the international relevance of the K-Club for, for golfing fans around the world? Yeah, well, I was a little bit younger then, so my memory wouldn't be great, but I guess it was uh, to bring the Ryder Cup to, to Ireland is special, you know what I mean? And, and that's a, a huge event. So uh, golfing is golfing in Ireland uh, is something that everybody takes part of every family is is playing golf so to have the Ryder Cup then in 2006 was huge and to have it in the K Club uh, back then it was it was an enormous achievement for Ireland and and tourism in Ireland and to have it again now in 2017 or 2027 I should say uh, is even is even greater I'm not sure many countries have hosted it twice so we're fortunate to have that that's impressive I know you also have a lot of experience uh, at Glen Eagles as well, too, before coming to the K-Club. Um, talk to me about what it's like to run the show at these preeminent European clubs and, and what the daily demand is like for yourself as a GM. Yeah, look... I think I, you go on Harold. I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm giving you some extra credit, is what I'm saying. No, I think I think it's about... Um, like, every day is a different day. You know what I mean? No, no two days are the same, and it's about the variety and the challenge. And what I personally love is that you can have different conversations with di- different people around the... The, the resort and it's not like a typical city city center hotel so the variety for me is is what keeps me excited and, and that's what I enjoy the most. Um, we're talking a lot on this trip about the evolution of the business of golf in Ireland. Um, tell me a little bit about the business of the K-Club and kind of what you help oversee to bring events like this and, and make them happen, make them look 
as amazing as they are. The build-up's already begun. The event, I say. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was one of the objectives when our new owner, Michael Feddersen, uh, purchased the K-Club back three years ago was to, was to bring events like this back to the K-Club. Uh, so it's the journey of that and evolving it and, and the commitment to, to have it for three years, for 23, 25 and 27. Um, that takes a bit of thinking to, because you're, you're plotting it through the business to make sure that it's fitting in at the right time of the year and you're building your other business around it. So, but that's what a team is. You know, we have a great team here and uh, it's not just me, it's everybody who, who plays a part into that um, and to make it successful. So you're relying on a lot of, you're relying on a lot of people and, and listening and, and hopefully you make the, the right decisions. Yeah, it takes a village, as they say, <laughs> yeah, to make it absolutely. all work. I love that. And in terms of the experience here at the K-Club, one thing that immediately struck me is just how attentive the staff is and how beautiful the landscaping is here. I'm curious, when people visit for the first time, what's the thing that they say sticks out or surprises them the most about the K-Club? Yeah, no, thank you. And I think I think the staff is what, is what we're most proud of. Uh, it's the employees, and, and that's what hospitality is about. It's about taking care of guests and giving them a great time. Uh, and I think that's what Ireland is renowned for. Uh, with regard to the, the landscaping and, and the presentation, you know, Jerry Byrne has been with us since day one. He, he has overseen the whole resort and his detail and eyes are, are what makes it happen in the background. Um, but back to the, the first point, it's the, it's the employees. That's what yeah. makes, that's the, the magic of, of the K-Club. It's a tremendous experience for anyone who hasn't been. Um, let's talk about the 19th hole because it's something we always feature with all of our guests. I heard about the Barton restaurant. For those who have never been, tell everyone what that experience is like dining at the Barton. Sure. Well, we have three restaurants, and the Barton is is one of our restaurants. It's within the hotel, uh, and it carries the most history within within the property. And uh, it's our signature restaurant, so it's the one that we're most proud of. And I guess it's the one that where if you want a, a special occasion and you want to dress up and feel good about yourself and and have a nice evening, the Barton is is the is the restaurant to to go to. Very cool. I'm going to take myself on a tour of the facility. It looks unbelievable. But we always finish with our 19th hole question. So the question is, when you finish a round here at the K-Club and you get into the clubhouse, what's your food and drink one you go with? Um, well, I, I, I like a nice pint of Heineken is my, my first choice. So okay. that's what I, I enjoy. Um, and you can't go wrong with a, a good Irish ribeye steak. Or, uh, that's probably what I'd, I'd be going for after a round of, steak, or a round of golf. So a ribeye and a Pint of Heineken. Maybe. Steak and a beer. That's just yeah. what I did last night. I love it. The man of my word. I appreciate it. Paul Heary, thank you so much for hopping on. Appreciate it. Best of luck with everything at the K-Club, not only for the Irish Open, but in the years ahead as well. Great. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. You know, I, I find it interesting that you think that everyone here in Ireland would say Guinness is their 19th hole. Well, that's the stereotypical answer, and Guinness is absolutely everywhere. That's a Literally. Fact. We drove past the Guinness brewery. I on wonder, the way out to the K-Club. I got to know who got like the area sales gig in Dublin, Ireland for Guinness, like as a company. Yeah. They've got to be retired by now and have at least three or four houses to themselves. Easy. I think you could work that gig for a year or two and retire. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. So I thought it would be Guinness would be the popular answer. And keep, keep hearing Heineken from all these Irishmen. They, yeah. they love their Heineken here. It's, it's amazing. interesting. It's interesting. So after we talked to uh, Paul, the general manager, we talked to Paul, the tournament director of the Horizon Irish Open. Yeah, a guy that's worked all sorts of different events. And uh, he had some interesting perspective in the way he's kind of modernizing and kind of festivalizing this golf experience, giving a little bit of new age to the DP World Tour and the Horizon Irish Open. It's, I mean, it's going to be fantastic. It, as, you, as you mentioned, it's, it's a world-class golf, uh, golf resort, a uh, huge pedigree uh, from hosting the, the, the Ryder Cup in 2006 to multiple European Opens. Uh, on, on the, the European tour and then uh, the Irish Open in 2016 with the sort of famous uh, Rory McIlroy win. So yeah, bringing it back uh, in 2023 and then all the way through to 2027 is just is huge for, for this event. Definitely. Let's talk about those Rory moments um, and what you can see actually out of the course. Um, those two shots specifically and how they're commemorated actually out of the course as well. Yeah, so I, it's you know the, the finishing stretch is we play the the we play the course the wrong way round or the, the the championship way round, which yep. is different to how the members play it sort of day in day out. So 16, 17, 18 is uh, is a phenomenal finish. There's lots of jeopardy. Um, it requires some you know some amazing shots, which we saw in twenty sixteen. And I think uh, you know with the field that we have assembled, it's going to be you know it's going to be a, a really 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 good event. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to replicate those shots that Rory hit. We'll put, place a ball down and try. 
Um, but we'll leave him to do the amazing things, and, and hopefully fans will be able to experience that wherever they're watching. Let's first talk about the fans that are visiting here for the tournament as well. Um, tell everyone where we are in terms of proximity to Dublin uh, for fans that are traveling into the event. Yeah, sure. So we're, we're really close to Dublin. Um, Ireland is, is, a, is, is a lot smaller than sometimes it's, it's represented on a map. Right. Um, we are about 40 minutes drive from the city centre. Uh, we've got good transport links. We've got shuttle buses to pick people up from the train stations. Uh, we have a park and ride system for, to, to allow you know, more than most years uh, you know, car volumes to, to, to attend. Um, and it's really, really accessible. So, you know, the, the transport network in and around Dublin, also coming from the rest of Ireland, you know, is, is very easy to get. Definitely. Let's talk about the fans on TV. A lot of our American golf audience uh, loves, like I do, having coffee as we watch the DP World Tour in the morning yeah. for us. Uh, what's going to stick out for fans who are watching on TV at the event? Well, for, again, first of all, the, the course is, is in, in immaculate condition. Um, the test for the golfers is going to be phenomenal. Uh, the, the golfers that are attending are you know, strong, strong Irish showing, uh, led by Rory in attendance. We have Seamus Power, we have Shane Lowry, we have Padraig Harrington, and then we have you know, some of the up-and-coming stars, Tom McKibben. Tom McKibben, um, yeah, I just you know, saw him win recently. Yeah, on the tour. Yeah, yeah you know, it, this lad, he's really young. He's 20 years of age. Uh, he has got such a huge future, and he is handling himself so well on his on his maiden season so you've got you've got great golf uh, and then you've got good times good times is everything else that we can offer for the fans we have uh, we have live music we have um, scouting for girls as the headline act on the saturday evening Very cool. we're closing out the, the the weekend with an irish band called the stunning um we're going to have djs on course we've got uh, some metaverse challenges vr activations on course play the 16th hole as as rory did uh, through the metaverse Very in, in neat, VR. Yeah. A little bit of your event background. I know you have an extensive event background with things like the Olympics, award shows, and whatnot. Are you are you bringing a little bit of experience to this event now? Yeah, I try to you know try to use all of my experience uh, outside of the world of golf. And uh, you know, I was in golf for a long time previously. Um, and just you know, the, the vision is to create a, an entertainment property through the platform of golf, but encouraging more than just the golf fan to come to the event they they then will you know by by proxy touch golf build an affinity with the sport but really it's a family day out it's a fun day it's there's evening entertainment there's lots to do it's something for everyone very cool um, we love talking about food on our show so let's talk about concessions at the event tell me tell me about the array of things that people can get on hand at the tournament so we we hopefully have, have taken some strides to improve that for for this year um, and we have, through our sort of suppliers, we have created a, a food court uh, as opposed to the concession vans in the village. So it's sort of an upgrade. Uh, we're bringing in a Voca Cafe, which uh, for those of, those of you know is a, is a massive brand, uh, ma massive cafe and, and merchandise brand within the island of Ireland. It's a nice vibe, so, I like that. So, so that will be an uplift for, for people. Um, there are other things uh, around the course. We've got a, a 360 degree viewing platform bar uh, down at the 8th. Uh, you'll be able to see the 8th green, a little bit of the 7th green, the 18th tee, the 9th tee, all from the same uh, location. I'll post up there. That sounds like a good yeah, spot for so me. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Uh, we always finish with our 19th hole question, so I'll ask it to you. Uh, when you get in after a long day of golf on the course and you get into the clubhouse, what's your favorite thing you love to order, your favorite food and drink from the 19th hole? Oh, it's probably burger and chips. Burger and chips. Tried and true. <laughs> yeah. Love it. And what's the drink for you? Uh, be a Heineken. Heineken, that's the second one we've heard today. Yeah. Love it. Must be a K Club thing. Uh, again, Paul Gilman running the show here at the Horizon Irish Open. Thank very you excited very much. to see the tournament. Thanks for joining us. Thank too. you. Thank you very much. The Poles like their Heineken. There you go again. So a 19th hole seems to be a Heineken. And, and, our, and our guide during this whole week is drinking Heineken. Yeah, for sure. Our guide, Rory. Not yeah. Rory McIlroy. Not Rory, Rory McIlroy. is not showing us around, despite the fact no. I'd love to say he no. was. It's just great calling his name out and saying, hi, Rory, bye, Rory. Mm -hmm. Just makes you feel good inside. But we did get the opportunity during this media day at the Horizon Irish Open at the K-Club to chat with two-time PGA Tour winner and Irish Open winner Seamus Powers. Yeah, I love this because Seamus is a guy that not only I've seen, we've talked about in the last couple of years, but um, he actually helped pay some of my bills. So we get in that conversation as well yep. to figure out how that exactly happened and uh, some of his favorites on and off the course as well. Tell everyone uh, in our audience uh, how special K-Club is for the history of Irish golf specifically. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, even in my 
whatever last 20 years I mean there's just some unbelievable moments obviously Ryder Cup I mean that's always going to be hard to top in 2006 but even Rory's moment here in 2016 just an iconic venue in Ireland just amazing it I feel like it's one of those places that's just built to host big tournaments and he's going to have another big one here in six weeks' time. Definitely, yeah. In terms of your career, it's interesting because I noticed you did go to college in America. I did. What was that? Was there a culture shock going to Tennessee and coming back? Or there, what was the experience like for you? It, honestly, it was an amazing experience. Like I, I said, I absolutely loved it and I would, do it, I, would do this, I would do it the same way if I had to do it over, which is always a good sign. But it was, it was great. Like I, would, I was lucky. So we had like, um, like a Great Britain and Ireland heavy team, so it made the transition easier. So I hadn't, I didn't go recruiting trip or anything like that. So it was like you were kind of dropped in, but absolutely loved college golf, absolute blast. Uh, we really, we had a good team and we had a good time. Very cool. After yeah. this, we're going to do a little something special in Tennessee versus Ireland questions in a moment. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk about your playing career. Obviously, we do a lot of betting on the course of life. So I want to thank you for paying my bills for the win in Bermuda last <laughs> fall. It was the beginning of a great run for me. But for you specifically, that was your second win on tour. Yeah. What was the importance of that to kind of verify the first win that you had? Yeah, I suppose it's just, yeah, look, anytime you're going to get a win, it's going to be special. They're hard to come by and just kind of things went my way that week. And it was a place I've always enjoyed going to. Like I've, you know, over the last four or five years, been been there quite a few times, yeah. made some friends there and stuff. And it's a beautiful place. And it just kind of, it just, it just seemed to match up well with me. And we yeah, had to get the second one. It was huge. Obviously, the first one is, is just will always be remembered. But the second one, especially the way I, I kind of, I felt more comfortable in the situation, felt like much more in control. And. It was, yeah, it was amazing. Is that a celebratory night in Bermuda? How'd, how'd you celebrate that win? I'm yeah, we, I said, we had friends, we threw a party there at the hotel. It was nice. great, just a bunch there of Irish people and stuff. And yeah, it was good fun, really good fun. <laughs> Very cool. Um, let's talk about kind of what's next for your game. I know we have a lot on the horizon with not only the playoffs, but the possibility of a little bit of a match play event you may have heard of yeah. as well coming up. How's everything shaping up for you and where's your head at right now? Yeah, so I'd start, I'd go to FedEx Cup playoffs in two weeks time. And um, that's yeah. big for me. My goal at the start of the year was to get to the Tour Championship. So. I'm going to be in a good spot with a good chance to get there. Um, but I'm going to have to play well in Memphis and Chicago first. So it's going to be, it's great. I'm really looking forward to it. The playoffs are, are so cool. It's, you know, it's unusual for golf the way they do it. But I, I think it works well for TV and with the excitement levels. And then obviously Ryder Cup. At the moment, I'm definitely on the outside looking in. But, you know, I've, I have the opportunity starting in Memphis to have some big tournaments. And hopefully I can, uh, you know, make it hard for Luke not to pick me. But I'm going to need a lot of good golf. And hopefully I can uh, pull it out when I need it. Tell everyone about your game for those who don't know you yet. You're making your way on the world stage. You play with a lot of supreme accuracy and ball striking. I'm curious, do you consider yourself a power player? Your name is literally power. power, but do you consider yourself a power player? I'm long enough, but honestly, so, <laughs> there's so many of the young guys that are, are, are just very long. Insane, but I, right? I've never been, I've never left a tournament thinking if I hit it further, I, I would have done better. So I guess I've, I, have enough of, I have enough of it. Very cool. <laughs> uh, we love wrapping with our 19th old question for our guests. So I'm going to get right to it. Uh, when you get in the clubhouse, let's say you just finished 18 at K Club, you get in the clubhouse after a long, successful day on the course. What's your go to order, your favorite meal and drink to order? Oh, jeez, more than ever meal. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm mean, home in Ireland, it's probably a little bit different. I mean, I, I'm not too. Oh, that's tough. A good old Irish steak would be nice, actually, especially here. The food's lovely here. I'd say it'd be, I'd say it'd be some sort of beef here. Yeah, you Irish with the ribeyes and the beers. Yeah, yeah, You're obsessed yeah. with them, right? Yeah. I just had one in Royal Dublin, so I can't say I complain about that either. <laughs> Love it. Seamus, thank you so much for being a host here at the K Club. Looking forward to seeing the run with everything that's coming up in a few months and years, and uh, best of luck out there on tour as well. Thank you very much. Ribeye after 18 holes. We did that yesterday after Royal Dublin. And there's, there's, a, lot of there's a lot of cows here in Ireland. It's surprising to see how big steak is here. So if you just go on YouTube or Google, you think that you're just eating fish and chips and Irish breakfast all day and night here? I've just seen Irish beef left and right. That's all I've seen all week here. They're very proud of their steak. And I will say it's on par with a lot of steakhouses you see in a big U.S. city restaurant. If I'm not pretty better. impressed so far. If not better, it's yeah. pretty good. Um, so let's talk about the K Club. We did 18 holes. Yep. Uh, we actually started on 17. It was a shotgun start. So we okay, started yeah. on a par three 17th with one of the most narrow greens from the tee box I think we've seen. And um, what, do, what do we think of the course? What, what was your, and I know, I know what I'm going to say, but what did, what did you think of the course? Yeah, so the course is fair. There's, there's nothing ridiculous or silly or, or clown-like about it. It's a very fair test. Uh, they're not messing around when you get outside the fairway. No, they're uh, not. There were so many moments where 
it, it sounds like an exaggeration, but we were driving over or past our golf ball that we were looking for in, in just regular rough, not that far from the fairway, maybe 10, 15 yards wayward to where you're supposed to be. And you could lose a ball in a heartbeat in there. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just fascinated to see what that rough is going to look like in the coming weeks and months leading up to the Irish Open. And, that was a bear. And we heard they will not be mowing this grass until after the Irish Open. That's savage, and I love every minute of it. I so I'm it. here for that. What, first, second week in September. That's an absolute tune-in because I love good carnage. I love an Americanized golf course in Europe, and I love the best players in the world going at it. Uh, so I'll be curious to see. Um, who's taking divots and dents out of the rough like you and I were? Because, I mean, I think we moved about two or three acres of land today on that golf course. Yeah, I took a lot of divots today out of that rough. And there was a lot of, a lot of that rough where you, several times where I took a full swing and it went five, ten yards in front of me. There's this old cartoon noise where you hear like yeah. a munching or like you hear a cartoon character like take a gigantic bite into a piece of food. That's what it sounded like when you hit a seven iron or the rough at the K Club. Yep. Yep, sounds very, about right. Very intense conditions sounds out there. Right. Not totally unfair. Brute test, little over 7,000 from the tips. We absolutely were not playing there. It was cool to see our playing partners, Remick and Tyler, play from the tips, though, and get their experience. Uh, but yeah, nice full body course. Definitely going to host a lot of tournaments in future years. Let's talk about the 19th hole as well. A great view from that patio out on 18, where, of course, Rory made. A great wood shot to uh, oh, yeah. 230 yards from that three wood from the 18th. Um, we saw that spot, and they have yeah. a plaque out there in the 18th fairway. And there's just there's never going to be a world where you and I can execute that shot no. and, and hit a wood over that hazard and that land onto that green. Have it land as soft as he did. Check out that shot from the 2016 Irish Open on our socials or on YouTube. We did the Irish thing tonight too, Alex. We finished with steak. We went to Fire Restaurant, uh, a gorgeous steakhouse in what we thought was a, was a church, but it looks like it's not a church. It actually was some sort of residence that they ended up making into an event space and doing more than just living in. Um, it was beautiful. And 35-day aged sirloin steak. Yeah, I don't know if I've really ever had a true dry-aged steak. One of those things you see on the menu, but you're always kind of weary of the moment. But we took it. We seized the opportunity. Uh, and yeah, that venue was extraordinary. Just like a wonderfully architected building with a lot of history that we learned about. One of those restaurants where you're walking by it and as we're turning it, I was like, oh, we're, we're really going to eat here. Yep. That, that, that you could tell when you walk into a place, you know that's not like an average restaurant in a city. That was like the place to go Two, and to be. Eight o'clock on a Tuesday night. And the place was packed. It might as well have been Friday or Saturday. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. It was crazy. And the food certainly lived up to it. Uh, we had a nice little three-course meal, appetizer, steak, and dessert. The uh, whole thing was great. It yeah, was it's nice to have that company. You know what I mean? Like, it's not often you actually get to kind of take the time to get to know people and hear stories at a table like that as well, too, in a group setting. That's something unique for us. Mm -hmm. Also unique because you and I are usually just firing golf takes back at each other, and they just go out in the stratosphere. Yep. We could actually hear them with a group of people who cover the game and make their life out of it. So it was fun to kind of have those conversations on the group level as well. And it was nice to be validated on a certain extent with some of, some of the takes, maybe. <laughs> yes, our crazy takes about the future of the game of golf aren't that wild when you yep. break it down. Yep. Yep. So that was day two at the K Club and Fire. Day three, we're, we're going to the European Club. Uh, we're going to meet Pat Ruddy, who everyone has described as an eccentric. Yeah, um, definitely someone we've been told a lot about going into the day. So I'll be curious how he is. I mean, I'm in a full um, rental set test mode right now. That's true. Still waiting the, on your luggage. I hit the Callaway Mavericks on Monday. I hit the Titleist today. So far, the Callaways are in the lead. We'll see what comes tomorrow. I mean, if there's a world where my luggage gets to me tomorrow or Thursday, that'd be amazing. I'm already kind of counting it out, but I'll, I'll pray and see if it happens. Uh, but yeah, I would say the one thing that this has taught me, as crappy as the experience of losing your luggage in clubs has been, is that uh, you can find the hospitality and greatness in people a lot. And I've, I've noticed that throughout the week of this trip at both courses. They've completely understood the situation, just dropped everything to help us and accommodate the day. And that's been huge for me from a morale, morale perspective. Yes. You know, when, you, when you don't have any of your stuff or any of your golf trips, clubs on a trip like this, 
you can freak out for a lot of hours of the day, but those five, six hours when you've been at the course, it's been nothing but bliss. The real question actually maybe is, uh, since you, you're not playing with your own clubs, or do you feel you're playing better, worse, or the same? The Callaways at Royal Dublin on Monday gave me a little perspective and told me I, I need a new set of irons. Mm, That's yep. the one thing I have learned so far. I hit a few irons on Monday. Today's titles were nice. But I hit a few irons and a couple three woods today that reminded me that it might be time to re-up on this. Yeah. Clubs. I'm thinking this this holiday season, I'm going to tell everybody, like, don't get me anything else. Just give me money to either Dick's or PGA Tour Superstore. Let me go buy new clubs. Right? Yeah. I think it needs to happen. It's just get new clubs, get fitted out there. If you haven't heard that before, re-up the new clubs, yep. get yourself fitted, get something that's right for you. There's a lot of great stuff out there. It's been cool to try them, and we'll see what the rest of the week has in store. Right, indeed. We'll see if the rain holds off for us. We've had two beautiful days of weather. Rain on the forecast for us on Wednesday. Still hoping to play 18 holes of the European club. We'll be back with all of that. Yeah, the countryside awaits yes. us in the next couple days. We're headed south. Yeah. We'll have fun. And that was our first two days in... Ireland playing Royal Dublin and the K Club. Again, big thank you to Tourism Ireland and Golf Ireland for having us out and putting it all together for us. Next week, we'll have the conclusion of our trip. You'll hear some snippets from conversations we had with Pat Ruddy. He's the designer of the European Club, a fantastic course. We'll talk about our day exploring County Wexford and the southeast of Ireland and our final round of the week at Ra's Lair. Make sure to tune in for that next week. Make sure you punch that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Follow us on Instagram, COL Podcast. That's where we're posting all the photo and video that we took during the week. You can find me on Instagram, M-W-R-I-N-C. Alex is Course of Life. Alex, for now, we'll see you next week.